Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you live in the United States, you are aware that cost of living is rising. Wages are not keeping up. Inflation is just crazy. So since that all started and actually since the beginning of the pandemic, things have been tough in our household. But we've been finding ways to fight back against all of that and we're continuing to try to be frugal and we're finding ways to just combat these rising costs. And I decided to sit down and make a list of those things that we are doing so I can share them with other people and share them with you. So maybe, maybe it can help you as well. So here's my list of things to help with the rising costs. Now we all know that the cost of fuel has just been rising like crazy. So being frugal, uh, we usually watch our trips that, you know, when we leave the house, we are trying to try to be careful how much uh, fuel we use and how much wear and tear we put on our vehicles. But when the cost of fuel started going up, we were even more careful. So what that means is my husband only uses his truck to go to and from work so that I have my car for work and my daughter has her car for school. If we go anywhere else, like we have another part-time job where we do deliveries out of town, we use my car. And if we have to go out of town for a doctor appointment or um, to get groceries or do some extra shopping, we use my car because it's the... I, I would say it's the most fuel efficient. My daughter is, is probably a little bit better than mine, but as far as like fitting stuff in the car and for all of us to fit in it, it, that would be my car that we would have to take. We also pay attention to like, if there's something that I, you know, needs to be picked up from our local dollar store, um, it's right down the road from where I work. So I'll try to plan that with times that I am working. If something needs to be picked up from the local hardware store or the other grocery store, my husband will do that on his way home from work. Or um, he walks if the weather's decent because it's not very far from our home. So we are limiting our trips and paying attention. If we're going out of town for something, we check and see if there's anything else that we need to take care of while we're there and get it all done in one trip. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is we shop at Sam's Club. So we have a membership at Sam's Club and now there's Costco in the area and there's probably other stores like this around your area, but they're bulk stores and you can get discounts and you can, um, they have, some of them have fuel stations and you get discounts at the fuel stations for being a member of this club. There is an annual membership fee and I believe Sam's Club started out at $35. It may be higher now, um, but we started out about a year and a half ago and I wish we would have done it sooner. And we recently upgraded to the premium membership because we were able to, we were able to fit it into our budget because there were more benefits with the premium membership. So we just decided that was going to be uh, good for our family. Now, some other people may just say, I'm gonna stick with the regular membership and that's fine. There are a lot of benefits with the regular membership as well. But with the premium, we now get cash back and some extra discounts. Um, we can also get shipping to our house. So if I don't wanna go out and go grocery shopping and I just wanna get the same thing I ordered last time, I pull up my Sam's Club account online and just tap all the items I purchased before and have it shipped to my house. So that is great. but. You can get a lot of discounts by shopping in bulk at a lot of these stores. If you buy in bulk, you'll see over time, you're gonna save a lot of money. So if you're able to make that work and maybe only do one shopping trip a month, over time, you're going to see the savings adding up. And you're also gonna be saving time, you're gonna be saving on fuel, saving on wear and tear of your vehicle, and it's just all around gonna end up being better. And it's been so beneficial for us I wanted everybody else to know that that is something that's great. And just as an example of how we're saving money, if you buy toilet paper from Sam's Club and you buy their brand, and it's very good quality, mind you, you're not gonna sacrifice anything on comfort there. It's like $20 now, it used to be a couple dollars less, but $20 on average for a toilet paper that lasts about four to four and a half months. So we're purchasing it three times a year on average. 
So about $60, $60, $70 we're spending on toilet paper a year. And we were spending on average about $10 to $15 a month on toilet paper because there's five of us and two bathrooms. So that's a lot. So close to $130, $140 we were spending on toilet paper before versus $60 to $70 now. You do the math. We're saving there. And that's not the only way we're saving. So if you think about it, over time, I think by shopping and buying in bulk, we're probably saving hundreds of dollars a year. And there's also other stores that offer rewards programs where you can earn rewards towards points that you can redeem for cash back or to use towards purchases in the store. Those are great things. We, we have a Casey's rewards account and we go to Casey's all the time. We have two here in town. We, we see other Casey's stores, other places and state gas stations. So our rewards just add up and add up and add up. You can use those towards cash, towards purchases, or redeem the points for fuel discounts. So all around, it's a great thing to look into, but make sure you check out all those benefits before you sign up for any rewards programs, especially if there's an annual fee. So in order for our monthly shopping trips to work, I have to first go through and make a budget. Now, I try to adjust our budget about every three months I have to go through and I have to look at our budget. Sometimes a little more often, depending on how things are. Now with costs rising and um, you know we have things that happen in the house or maybe my husband can't get overtime or something happens where I have to take a couple days off of work and then I won't get paid. The budget has to be adjusted accordingly. You can't just say, I always spend $500 on groceries and that's that. You have to adjust your budget accordingly so that you don't end up with nothing left, basically, or end up being overdrawn in your bank account. I'll admit that's happened to us in the past because I wasn't paying attention. So we set a budget. And then I go through the house and I make lists. I make an inventory list of what we still have in the house. I figure out what we can make from what we have left. And then I get an idea of... Um, what we need to buy to make a few more meals with what we still have left or you know what meals do we want to have in the next few weeks that we can maybe buy some ingredients for or buy things that we can make multiple meals with um, different things like that so then we make a list of the meals we want and then i base my grocery list off of that so then I kind of go through and I see about how much is this all going to cost us. I have a system to find out, you know, get a general idea for prices. And then um, if that is within our budget, we're good. If I'm, if I'm significantly under budget, like I, I do try to factor in that some prices may have changed just a little bit. Of course, I factor in that there's tax and things like that. If there's a significant difference, though, between what I have budgeted and what I think these groceries are going to cost, I will allow for a little extra to get things if there are there's stuff on sale that I know we're going to use. That's how we end up with extra stuff in the house to make things, you know, make meals for a couple extra days if, if something happens, we have to push back our shopping trip, whatever. But you always want to have a little extra for emergencies. Just you never know what's going to happen. Somebody gets sick or there's bad weather and you just can't get out. And then... I will um, take my calculator with me when we go shopping. I have my list, I take my calculator, and I keep track as we go along. If something strange happens and between the time I do all that planning and the time we go shopping, if something happens and the prices go up, I, I, I have to I have to adjust for that, but that's why I take my calculator and I try to figure out and I have to get creative sometimes right there on the spot. And it it's worked out, <laughs> but I tell you it's stressful. But if you have somewhat of a plan going in, it's not that hard. And if you look at the meals you're gonna make and you can say, well, I can substitute something or this meal doesn't have to have a bunch of extra onions in it or whatever. You can you can improvise and I've gotten really good at that over the years. So, and nobody's really complained. My daughter's kind of a picky eater. But anyway, other than that, it's worked out. But if you have somewhat of a plan going in, it's not as stressful.
The last things I wanna talk about, I'm kinda of gonna group them all together to make this short and sweet, but we limit our utility and our product use in our home. And I'm talking about like our electricity, our water, and then of course also our personal products that we use, toiletries and things like that, and like dish soap and all of that. So as far as the utilities go, we try to limit our use of using lights and things. Um, we have a programmable thermostat and um, we have a higher capacity washing machine. So we do laundry a lot less than we used two years ago. And I have a clothesline outside that I can hang clothes when it's not raining and it's nice. And yeah, it's raining right now in Illinois. It's been raining a lot, so I can't do that. You know, we're just able to watch our water use as far as taking showers and things. Now, as far as our products, personal products and things like that, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and um, even laundry detergent, we've been shopping with an online company that makes products that are um, basically not as watered down. They're more concentrated, so you use less, but yet they're just as effective, if not more effective than the items you would buy in the store. So we're using less, we're going through them um, a little less often than we, you know, as what we would if we had bought something from the store. So we're able to keep costs down that way. But there's other items that I've researched and found out that you don't need as much of that item for it to be effective. So those, those little tactics, those little things have really helped uh, because we're not buying some of these things as often. We're not paying as much for um, our utilities as we used to like we got our water bill down like we brought it down like $40 so it it pays or I should say it saves you if you research these things and just just try to be a little more conscious of what you're using and um, and how you're using it so those are just some ways that we've tried to help keep our costs down and kind of fight back against all this inflation and, and, and everything going on right now. Um, I hope it, it will help some of you out there. Um, if it does, great. If it doesn't, you know, maybe you just got some entertainment out of my video. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, um, go ahead and subscribe. Y'all have a great day. Bye.